Welcome to St. Thomas University School of Law. Thanks for joining us today for a campus tour. My name is Dean Fonseca Nader and I'm the Dean for Enrollment and happy to welcome you to the St. Thomas Law family. My name is Jamie Noisley and I'll be your SBA president for 2020-2021 academic year. Jamie will be doing your tour today. I'm just coming around, along for the ride. Okay, let's, let's go. get started. Okay, so this is our Center for Student Affairs where you have your admissions office, you have the Student Affairs office, the Financial Aid office, and your Registrar office. So everything you'll ever need as far as classes are concerned or any questions about graduation requirements, class requirements, uh, registration, everything is right here, okay? This is the breezeway. This is the hub for all of the student interaction. Uh, this is where all of the students will eat, have lunch, study, take a study break, socialize with their friends, and even have different events within the breezeway. Uh, so normally we'll have different clubs out. Uh, our bar review company will be out here also handing out materials for you. Um, if you need help with your 1L courses, 2L courses, 3L registration for the bar. Uh, we'll also have the Center for Career Development. Ha we'll have uh, events out here where there will be different legal professionals and attorneys here to talk to you or here to uh, get your, collect your resumes and uh, move forward with internships and things of that nature. And academic success too. Now. And academic success. That is right. Uh, we have an academic success program where there are different students who will be able to help you with basically tutoring. So any course that you need help in, um, 1L courses like contracts and torts, 2L courses like evidence, um, they'll be there in the breezeway with a sign so you'll always be able to locate them and ask them for help. So they really just sit there in the breezeway studying, having their lunch until you come up to them and talk to them um, and ask them a question. And they're always ready and prepared to help you. On the side here is the cafe. And here, if you want to bring your own lunch and dinner to class, uh, to school rather, you can do that. We have refrigerators, microwaves, toaster ovens, and we'll always have uh, coffee, cafe con leche, and the Nader loves, uh, and all sorts of things, uh, vending machines, so you'll always have stuff to eat on campus. There are a couple other places on campus we can get some food too, and we'll show you that in a little bit. This is our moot court room. The Moot Courtroom is basically going to be the first place you see when you're admitted because you'll have your orientation in here where you'll meet your faculty, your fellow classmates, and even some of the ASP fellows. Um, so this is it. Uh, we also will have different attorneys, judges, like I mentioned before, and legal professionals come out and uh, give us presentations. They'll have uh, different events for us to participate in, like panels. And there also will be, um, every spring semester, the third DCA, which is District Court of Appeals, will have a hearing here uh, where one of our students from the Appellate Litigation Clinic will actually do a real uh, trial, a real appellate trial. Oral argument. Uh, argument, sorry, argument. <laughs> so, um, speaking of trial, we have trial team and we have the uh, moot court teams. The difference between that is moot court will be the appellate level and the uh, trial, uh, trial team will be the trial level. So, trial team is more gathering evidence, learning how to speak to uh, the jury, um, how to have good courtroom decorum, how to um, speak to the, uh, the members, the other side, opposing counsel, um, cross-examining witnesses, things of that nature. Appellate level in moot court is more writing, so you'll be writing a brief. When you go to court, you'll be in front of a panel of judges who will already know the facts of the case. When you get to the appellate level, it's no longer uh, a trier of fact sort of thing. It's more um, you're trying to tell the court why you think 
the court, the lower court erred in their decision or they were correct in their decision and why this group of uh, judges before you should move with what you're saying. So if your client is, uh, they feel like they were wronged and you're trying to appeal the case, you're saying while the rules of the case should have been in favor of your client because of the facts that were presented and the other side will do the opposite. Um, and that's pretty much it for the courtroom. So let's keep going. Right, we're back in the breezeway. Now let's take a walk through the wing of the law school. Okay, so um, the good thing about St. Thomas is we're very localized with our location. So the building is very centralized. We're all right here, but the rest of the campus is just a small walk away. You've got your cafeteria and bookstore all on the same side. To the left, you've got the chapel right there in front of us to the left. You also have um, the business office all the way down the path and the undergraduate library and Einstein's bagels are just around this corner. So let's take a look at the Center for Professional Development for Career Services. A good way to explain the distinction between career services and admissions is in the admissions office, we take you when you're first coming in. Once you're in, you are the babies of career development. You'll be with them forever. <laughs> and this is it. So for the Center for Career Development, you will have a advisor uh, we have Sharia Randall, who is our public sector advisor, and we also have Laura Varela, who is our private sector um, counselor. You will have a mandatory meeting every semester just to go over your plans for the next semester and uh, for summertime or uh, the Christmas break if you want to do any internships or clinks or things of that nature. Um, and then you can meet with them as many times as you'd like afterwards. Um, and then if you need help with your resume building, writing your cover letter, um, doing mock interviews, all that stuff can be done here. So let's go see everyone. Okay. First we have Dean Fernandez. We also have Dean Koss. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. And last but not least, Dean Dykus. Okay. And this is your office for career development. Dean Koss is the dean for alumni affairs, while Dean Dykus. Um, oversees our clinic, cl clinical and externship placement. Um, Jamie will talk to you a little bit more about the clinics and externship placements in a little while. So now we are in the wing of the breezeway. Um, on this side we have a couple more classes and we'll look at some more classes when we go back to the main building. Uh, but also on this side is our office where all of the journals will be held. So your journals are exactly what they sound like. You will, as a journal uh, member uh, or member candidate, you will uh, write a piece uh, on a topic that you're interested in and that relates to whichever journal you're a part of. So basically, you'll research something, write about it, and you'll use Blue Book Citation, which is kind of like the law school version or the lawyer version of MLA or Chicago. This is how we cite now with Blue Book. So basically, you'll use your Blue Book, your Florida procedure rules, and you will write something, send it up to the editor. The editor will make the correction, send it back down. You correct again, and then we'll publish it. So here we have uh, three different journals, your regular law review, 
We also have the Journal for Complex Litigation and the Journal for Intercultural Human Rights. So let's go inside here. So these are your three journals, like I mentioned before. And we also have the Student Bar Association. So the Student Bar Association is going to be uh, where you can go to uh, address any of your concerns or give any ideas you may have for the school or for events. Uh, and basically, we are the liaison between the student body and the faculty and staff. So um, you can actually join the SBA as a 1L, as a 1L sender. So when you come in, you'll have a petition to sign. You'll get 10 of your uh, fellow 1Ls to sign and um, basically you'll turn that in to us, we'll review it, and then you'll have elections where you can go and you'll speak on behalf of yourself why you think you'll be a great senator. Um, and then when you get into your 2L and 3L year, you can run for e-board positions. And that goes for every club on campus. Another good thing about uh, the Student Bar Association that you should probably know is we are in charge of the Inner Club Council, uh, or ICC for short. Basically, we are the go-to for all of the clubs on campus. So there are social clubs that you can join as a 1L, and then there are academic clubs like the Law Review, Moot Court, Trial Team, and Student Bar Association that you will join as a rising 2L, meaning you're going into your second year of law school, or 3L. Um, social clubs are all run by the SBA ICC um, and so you can join clubs that you identify with or clubs that you think uh, you would like to um, give you access into different areas of law. So for example, I'm the president of the Caribbean Law Student Association because I identify with it because I'm Jamaican. Or uh, you could also join the Tort Law Society. If you turn out, turns out that you really like tort law, you could do that. Or Criminal Law Society, uh, Public Interest Law Society, all sorts of different ones. And every uh, fall semester will be out in the breezeway so you can see all of us and you can go around and sign up with, with whatever one you think you may be interested in learning more about or just helping in general, okay? And we'll keep going. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this is the section of the wing where there are just some more areas for you to study. Uh, if you're more of an outdoorsy person, you prefer to be outside to be in nature, or um, if you just want to get away from the cold indoors or whatever it may be, you could come out here and there are chargers, charging stations next to each table. So you can bring your laptop, charge your phone, your devices, whatever you need. Now we're back to the breezeway again. So from here, we'll go into the library so you can get a look at um, where your law students always are. This is something we could note. You're gonna get an ID when you come in as a 1L. Um, whenever the library is closed in the main section, you'll be able to go to the side door, scan your ID and get in. And even sometimes the front entrance as well. So always have your ID with you. Go. Okay. And this is our Legal Information Center. Um, your first year of law school, you're going to take uh, legal writing. And that's when you're going to learn about um, how to research um, within the legal context, um, basically how to cite, all of that stuff. And if you have trouble figuring that out, you can come to the Reference Center and actually get help um, figuring it out so that you have those skills moving forward into your second year. Okay. Here we have a wide space for study. Okay. 
And then here uh, is one of the locations where you can take a break, take a phone call if you need to, um, just charge your phone. There's a charging station here. Um, and then uh, just whatever you need to do. The bathrooms are here on either side. Um, and the elevator is also here if you need to use it to get to the second floor. Uh, this first floor is open 24 hours and the top floor will be open 7 a.m. to 12 a.m. Um, the only difference between upstairs and downstairs is you will need to bring your own study material, your own laptop devices and things of that nature for the first floor. But on the second floor, we have study rooms and we also have the computer lab. So if you didn't bring any of your stuff, you can use it upstairs, okay? So let's go take a look. Here we go. There are also other tables where you can sit and block yourself off, sort of like testing procedure and prepare yourself for any of your exams or the bar. We also have a bunch of different study material, supplements as they're called, uh, to basically help you understand the basic stuff about your courses or about something that may be troubling you that you are not quite getting. Always make sure you ask your professors which supplements are the best, which ones to stay away from, if they just don't explain as well as they'd like it to, or in a way that they want you to understand it. So here's what some of our study rooms look like. Okay, um, you can always study with a group of people or just by yourself. You can also uh, rent out markers and uh, dry erase um, erasers for the board if you need to use it. Otherwise, you can just hang out in here. You'll get a key, you'll keep that key with you. The door locks when you leave, so you can go get a snack, come back when you're ready to continue studying. And you, I think you can re renew it every two hours. Okay. We'll go this way. Here we have some more study rooms that basically line the walls. And if we keep walking, we'll get to the computer lab. Okay. So this is our computer lab. When you are admitted as a student and registration will begin, uh, you will get a login and password that you can use for all computers on campus. Also, you have your ID. So again, with the ID, you can do different things on campus. For example, if you print to the computer um, on campus, or even if you're printing from your own device, it's connected to the STU printer, you just put your ID right there, and it'll light up with all your information, all your print jobs, copy jobs, whatever it is that you need to do. And you'll just go ahead and hit access to log out. Um, printing is free on campus, uh, so you don't have to worry about reloading your card or anything like that, like you maybe used to do in undergrad. There's also a Lexus printer if you want to print directly from LexisNexis, which is one of our uh, research websites. Um, you can print from anywhere, they'd like to say. So if you're not even in the state and you still need to print something to the school, you can print to the Lexus computer and you'll be fine. Right behind you is the OIT office. That is where you can get any of your tech info uh, or problem uh, issues resolved. Um, if you need to reload your card again, you can also let him know and he'll go ahead and take care of it for you. And that's it for in here. And again, more supplements. It's just like any other library. So you go into the library downstairs, you check in a book, um, you return it when it's due, just like your normal library. Okay, so now we can head back downstairs.
and this is our last section of the library. This is where a lot of us like to hang out in the morning if we need to read before class, um, go over our briefs one more time before we begin. And you know, it's just a nice atmosphere for studying. Again, you wanna make sure you bring your own laptops, other devices, chargers, anything you need for this side. Um, you'll be good to go. Back in the breezeway again, so now let's head upstairs. Upstairs is where you can find all of your faculty offices. You can also find the dean's office upstairs. And there will also be a few more classrooms upstairs as well. Lining the walls are the faculty offices. Your legal writing suite will be right here, and all of your professors, no matter what class it is, will, they'll all be up here, okay? So, uh, we also have the LLM JSD program. Dean Nader, did you want to talk a little bit about it? Yeah. So our LLM in Intercultural Human Rights is one of our signature program. Um, we have a program in intercultural human rights that spans this, um, your JD program. We have a certificate in intercultural human rights that allows you to take up to 12 credits towards that LLM so that when you graduate with your JD, if you wish to pursue the LLM, you may continue for another semester to finish the LLM. We also have the intercultural human rights law review that will help you towards that end. Right. Okay, and so as you keep walking, you'll see more of the faculty offices. We have an open door policy, okay? So that means um, if you have a question and it doesn't necessarily have to be during office hours and you see your professor's door is open, you're more than welcome to just lightly knock, go in and ask your questions. Professors love when you come to talk to them. Um, they love getting to know you. They love answering any of your questions because that means you're trying and that's what they like to see. So you also have Professor Gibbs, and right here is Professor Castleberry. They are your academic success faculty. So remember the ASP fellow office we went to downstairs? These are the faculty members who help you to that same end. So if you feel more comfortable talking to a professor, you can come to Professor Gibbs or Castleberry. If you feel more comfortable talking to a fellow student, you can go downstairs and speak to the fellows. Either way, you can get outlines, um, study material, you can get uh, practice essays, practice multiple choice questions, whatever you need to help you understand the material better. Okay. Professor Casper is there. And again, all of these doors are professor offices. Okay. And then, when we get to this side, there are a few more classrooms. And then here you can see all the flags that represent all of our students, our faculty, where we all come from, because this is a very diverse campus um, and we all love each other. Okay, so let's head back downstairs. We'll look at a classroom so you can get an idea of what your class size will be like. So, first, this is the ASP office, okay? The academic success faculty and the uh, fellows 
all will be here at some point, so they hold office hours. So they'll be here, the door will be open, you can go in and ask questions at that time, or you can make a schedule appointment on the door. These are all the things that they help with. So scheduling, time management, essay writing, multiple choice, uh, the things I mentioned earlier. Um, they are basically here as your personal tutor. So there are enough resources here for you to do well. Never struggle alone, it's not advised. And there are a bunch of people here who, by the way, are ASP fellows because they did well in their 1L courses. So you're, you're sure to be working with people who know what they're doing and understand the law, okay? I've got in here. We're going to pass the clinics. So on campus, we have the appellate litigation clinic, an immigration clinic, and a tax clinic. Dean Dykus uh, also has a clinical program where she can connect you with different clinics outside of um, the school itself. But these are the ones we have on campus. So basically, working in a clinic is kind of like being the legal representation before you're actually an attorney. So you will be basically um, meeting with indigent clients who need help with whatever situation, whether it's appellate, uh, immigration, or tax uh, based. And then uh, you'll take the notes, you'll meet with them, you'll do the legal research, you'll go to court, you'll argue. So you're acting as the legal representation even though you're not licensed yet. The reason you can do that is because you're working under a licensed attorney, so they'll always be there to help guide you, make sure you're doing the right thing, make sure you're reading the codes that you need to read properly, the rules, everything. So it's a nice way to build your resume and also get credits um, for the semester. Okay? And then we'll look at a classroom. Notice that next to each classroom is always going to be a schedule for every day and every time. Remember, the registrar's office, you can actually rent out classrooms at the end of the day if there's nothing else scheduled um, for two hours at a time where you can study by yourself with groups of friends, um, however you'd like to do it, and you'll have the entire board space to work with as opposed to the smaller board in the library if that's what you prefer. Um, and then you will get a sheet of paper that you can slip in over the schedule so that anyone who walks past knows that this is the room that you've rented out for those few hours, okay? So let's go inside. This is what your average classroom will look like. You've got all the seats here and your professor will be up front by the podium. Professors had different teaching styles, so some may write on the board, others may use PowerPoint. Um, it kind of depends on that specific professor. Uh, as a 1L, your class size will go up and down depending on how many of you decide that this is the school for you and you want to go ahead and pursue your legal degree here. Um, but your class uh, section will always say the same. So it's going to be somewhere between uh, 50 and below students in each section. So no matter what your class size is, you'll always have 50 students or less in the classroom so you can get that interactive experience that you want to have with your professor. So that'll take you to maybe the second to last row. Um, and then you'll be able to uh, raise your hand ask your questions, be heard, not have any issues um, with having a good experience in the classroom. Something else you should know, any time that you're not spending inside the classroom, you probably want to be spending actually studying for classes. Uh, so your average schedule, let's say you'll have two classes a day that's about four hours. So every single hour you have outside of that, you can spend however you'd like, but it's advised that you actually study. So stay behind in the class, actually talk to the professor as they pack up, ask any questions that you had on your mind while you were in class, 
go to the library, see the reference librarians, see if you can work on that legal writing project, or hang out in the breezeway with everyone and just go over your outlines, start preparing them for finals, things like that. Now we're back to where we began. Here's your registrar's office again, where you'll sign up for classes and get any questions answered about that. And back to admissions. We hope you enjoyed your tour today. Yep, it was great. We hope to see you soon. We're so excited for you. Congratulations.